Hi everyone, I'm Professor Sally Eve, CEO of Tomorrow's Tech Today, and a very warm welcome to the latest episode of our new bi-weekly LinkedIn Live series. We look at the people, the projects, the story, and the technology behind some truly inspirational SAP Innovation Award winners for 2022. And these are awards that are really celebrating achievement and talent from forward-thinking companies and individuals alike, really disrupting industries, helping the real world to run better, and also just generally improving people's lives. Today, we're focusing in on energy and sustainability with X Nation which offers one of the most consumer-focused solutions in the decentralized energy world. And I think at the moment, with this such a talking point affecting every single one of us, I think, from consumers to ecosystem partners, it really is something that can make a huge, huge difference to so many. It really helps both energy providers and customers to make efficient choices and make better switches to renewables. So to dive into all of the details, I'm delighted to be joined by a brilliant guest speaker today and Selma Warner, who is co-founder of XNation and also a Forbes 30 under 30 to boot too. So welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, it's great to be here. So yeah, thanks a lot for the warm intro. <laughs> Oh, my pleasure. Fantastic. Um, and I wonder if we could start, you know, at the beginning, just share a little bit more about yourself and what you do and kind of where this project came from. Sure, definitely. So yeah, my name is Anselm Avana. I am one of the three co-founders of Exnaton. Um, we are a spin-off company of ETH Zurich. My two co-founders and I, we all did our PhDs at a research institute, which is uh, yeah, basically organized by ETH Zurich and University of St. Gallen here in Switzerland. And um, we did research around using energy data in the energy industry to improve the integration of renewables. And in particular, we worked on a large research project um, around a local energy market uh, a few years ago. And when we worked on this, um, we really got a lot of interest from the basically public media, from a broader audience, but also really from the energy industry. And um, we noticed that a lot of people that were already a little bit more interested in energy were really asking, well, this is actually a great idea, local energy market, selling energy from a solar panel to my neighbor. This is also what I want to do. So we got really got some interest from the ground there. But then on the other hand, in the industry, a lot of the experts from established businesses were a little bit hesitant. They all said, yeah, this is a great idea. It sounds great on a conceptual level, but we have made some negative experiences with people not being interested enough in energy. Um, so, yeah, we were, you know, in the beginning a little bit doubtful, but at some point realized, hey, we believe that there is so much potential there to make this industry more efficient, to make renewables more attractive, that we gave it a shot and, and spun off the company. And it turned out that there was a demand for it in the market at the time already. And then now in the past two years, we could really see, yeah, climate change becoming um, more visible to a larger audience. So more and more people started to think about, okay, how can we actually save emissions? And then energy comes into play quite soon. So um, that's where we really saw this market take off more and more. And utility companies understand that they really need to build these consumer focused solutions. So we're really happy to now be providing a, a software solution for energy sharing that makes it really easy for utilities to bring new products to the market. Absolutely. I think that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's reducing that complexity and ensuring that great experience and seamlessness of it. I think everybody wants to you know, make informed choices and have that ability to make decisions uh, and make them easily. So that importance around easy visualization, you know, that kind of single plane of glass and really yeah. being able to compute and visualize those energy flows, whether you're a household or a business, yeah, it's definitely. really equipping you to make those choices, isn't it? Yeah. And I think it's really interesting because in many areas of life we already have a lot of super detailed insights into what we do right i mean nowadays data sensors devices they allow to tr allow us to track so many things like you know so many people track how many steps they take a day how many calories they consume um, i mean cars know exactly where you go you have google maps that shows you where you've been throughout the year and so on right there are so many applications that analyze what you do and help people 
make their life more efficient or more healthy or whatever it may be. But in the energy space, we really have hardly any applications that provide people with insights on how they can improve their behavior or their investments. And I think uh, that's, that's a shame. And as we can see, especially in Europe with the energy crisis now, um, these kinds of insights are really needed um, to become more energy efficient and to move to renewables faster than we have until now. Absolutely. I think it also helps in areas like really making it clear about the return on investment in renewables yes. as well. And also with some of the evolving trends we've got, like the rise of the prosumer, for example, as well. Um, and even things like emotional attachment, if you can actually see the impact of what you're doing and it's tangible and it's there and it's visualized, you know, I think that can make a huge difference to behavior change, too. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. And that's also, you know, what we um, saw in the interviews that we did in, in with users in our early stages is that really this kind of emotional attachment is very strong. Also, a lot of people actually that invest in or invested in solar power in the early days, I think often their motivation was something like we do this for our grandchildren. And so you can really see there is a strong emotional aspect in that. Mm -hmm. But obviously, if you want to address the larger masses, you also need to make the investment case worthwhile. So that's definitely also an aspect that's becoming more and more important. And right absolutely, here. absolutely. We've kind of naturally covered a few of these already. But if you were going to say like if maybe a couple of things maybe we haven't touched on in terms of the key outcomes or that you're most proud of of this so far, kind of what would you pick? Then perhaps we can kind of pivot a little bit and kind of look at the journey and the challenges you may have faced along the way and how you overcame those two. Because again, I think both are, are great learning opportunities. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think for me, there is uh, probably two areas uh, that I'm uh, most proud of and that we as a founding team, I believe, are most uh, proud of. On the one hand, I think it's really nice to be working in an area where you can use advanced technology, you can work, you know, with the latest uh, technologies out there, you can use a lot of data science applications that, you know, have always been very trendy in our university days and so on. But you really use these technologies and these um, methods for a very impactful purpose, because, you know, we could be fulfilling the same tasks, but developing an e-commerce app. And um, this is not to devalue people working on e-commerce apps, but for me personally, it would not be as motivating because for me, even, you know, when I'm a little bit frustrated with my work at some point and I have a task, which is annoying, which you will have in any kind of job, I always um, can go back to the thought that what we work on is actually useful in making the transition to renewables easier. And ideally, we can really actively contribute to the re reduction of emissions. And so there is definitely an, a value to, to what we do other than just being a successful company. So um, I think that that is very motivating. Um, and then the second uh, part that I'm very proud of um, is that we have really built up a great team by now, I believe. I think um, we're really trying to create a work environment that is uh, engaging and motivating to everyone in the team. And um, that's very hard as well. But um, I think it's uh, also really amazing to see when you have a group of people and not just three of us anymore, but a group of people that enjoy working together and um, that uh, enjoy learning and improving. Um, that's that's really great to see. And, and I'm very grateful and proud of that. I love those examples. I always think at the end of the day, you know, any major project, particularly when you're trying to do something of this type of scale, a, it's the people, isn't it? It really is. It's the people, it's the skill, culture, it's the skills, et cetera. And what you said before about that mindset, you know, when frustrations occur, when there are challenges along the way, if you've got that shared mindset, taking it back to the purpose of what you're doing, it really does help to bring people together and kind of take you through those moments, doesn't it? It's those, those yeah. moments that matter along the way and that shared experience of helping one another on that, I think really came so forward with, with, with your response there. So great to see that. I think it's so important. And we talk about technology and the latest emergent, you know, um, technology design, for example, but anything there, you've got to have those pillars right, haven't you, in terms of people, process, culture and skills. So it very much is a holistic proposition, as I, as I like to say. 
Um, but I am going to go on to technology now, because again, obviously, this is hugely important um, in terms of making all of this happen. So I'd love to explore a little bit the power of partnership. I think for me, one of the biggest learning points of the last couple of years has been what we can do when we come together. So how has the relationship with SAP in particular supported you? I know, for example, SAP for Utilities was really you know important piece and supported the integration too for this project. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that and help that how that facilitated your journey too. Yes. Um, yeah, for us, the partnership with SAP has really been a, a great pillar um, that we have, you know, uh, worked on for a, for a while by now. And it's really supported us greatly in our go to market and also in us establishing as a, you know, as a proper company, because um, I and I say this uh, very openly, because I think when you found a startup, especially as a university spinoff, initially, a lot of people perceive you as, you know, few young people trying out something and maybe not taking you as seriously as if another more established company would just roll out a new product, right? It, there is a strong difference in perception and to some degree that's also rightfully so because, you know, um, we're a smaller team, we don't have the resources of a larger company and so on. But on the other hand, especially in our case, we had a very strong expertise in our sector. So um, for us, we really tried to give our best to obviously build a great product, but also to be taken seriously on this market and not just uh, be seen as like some scientists experimenting a little bit with, with some stuff or some students. And here, I think the SAP partnership was really great on the one hand, because the people from the business unit really also supported us um, with, you know, giving insights, giving feedback into what we do and how we could also improve parts of our product. Um, and then on the other hand, also for the external perception, because obviously when you go to a meeting together with SAP as an SAP partner, um, some of the more conservative customer groups yeah, we'll just uh, perceive you more more seriously um, and perceive you more like a, a proper company rather than just, you know, a university group of people. So um, that was very helpful. And I really have to say I was very impressed by the motivation of the people from the business unit at SAP to really help us. I, I got the feeling that they hopefully also really enjoyed working with us, but I, I really did get that feeling. And it was really great because on the one hand, I think they were happy to get some fresh inputs from you know, us being a newer player in this, in this industry. And for us, it was great to learn from some of their experiences. So um, yeah, I think this has worked out great for us until now. I love that. And I also think you can see it from both perspectives there. As you were saying, that facilitation, not just the technology, but that experience and legitimacy um, to a degree we're discussing there from the power of that partnership. But equally, the fact that you as a burgeoning startup and everything you're going through, that, that agility to change and that rapid development, I'm sure there's lots of learning points the other way, too, if you see what I mean. So, again, it's a brilliant combination, isn't it? I love that. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And I think like, looking ahead now as well to turn of the future, obviously, as we talked about at the top, really, energy consumption front of mind for everybody at the moment. And I've also been seeing that it's around, well, it's quite a big gap, gap to, to a degree, but 30 to 60 percent is the average range of consumption about what's produced at the moment. So we've also got this thing about excess energy, ironically, in the current situation, too. But that's often unused because we don't know where that data is. So again, I think we've got some really interesting things looking ahead at where this could go next. So I'd love to kind of reflect that back to you. What are you doing about that in particular? And I'd love to kind of hear your overall plans for the future and the role of tech to help support that. Yeah, for sure. So um, our goal is definitely to make decentralized energy assets be used in a more efficient way and also be placed in a more efficient way. So our the data that we provide or create um, can definitely also really provide great insights into where it will make sense to do more investments in renewable assets or maybe storage assets. So um, I think right now, usually the, the hypothesis is, okay, we need more assets everywhere, which is true to some extent, or at least has been in the past. But with more and more distributed assets, we at some point need to 
start thinking about where is this really most efficient, where in the grid do we need to place new assets, um, which types of assets, where do we maybe need more storage to provide flexibility rather than to just generate energy. And I think um, here, like in any other sector, this very uh, simple phrase, you can't manage what you don't measure holds and so we're starting to measure it now but then we really still need to make sense of this data and i think here we can really help out on this local level um and that's that's what we're planning to do or what we're already doing um and i think there is yeah really going to be more and more importance on this optimizing also the placement and investments into specific assets in the future Absolutely. It's kind of this optimization in so many different ways with that, with that potential waste that we can turn to an opportunity there, but also things around, as you were saying, community energy storage with storage systems as well. And I think just overall that value of the community, um, not just around that exchange yeah. around energy, but in terms of best practice and, and sharing as well to help scale together um, to really increase that impact. So exciting times ahead. And as I said, couldn't really be more timely as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, you also asked about our, our uh, long term goals or the yeah. goals in the future. And I think here really we are now at a stage where we really want to increase our footprint with customers. I mean, now we have won our first customers. We have run the solution in the first energy communities in Europe. So um, I think we, we have shown that we are really ready to roll this out to a larger scale now. And that's definitely the plan for the for the months and years to come. Um, we're also also happy again to work in the partnership with SAP here because many of our customers already have SAP as their ERP system. So it's very helpful for us to, you know, assure them, hey, you're going to have a very easy time integrating our solution with your existing system landscape. So um, this, yeah, makes an easier entry for us, but also creates more value to the whole um, ecosystem around SAP. I hope so. I think, again, there is quite a beneficial partnership for both sides as well as for the customer, because for them, um, IT resources are very scarce. I mean, the IT departments in any utility, I think, are overstretched right now. So um, any time we can save them by already providing an integration, by already ha having pre-existing workflows, will will definitely help them in, in bringing the product to the market. So, yeah. Absolutely. Reducing any burden, reducing friction and enabling essentially all the opportunities we've talked about today as well. I think you're absolutely right. Is that power of partnership? And I would say to close where you heard it here first, you're ready to roll. <laughs> I'm going to put yeah. your words out there. Absolutely. I think that's fantastic. And I saw some feedback from the pilot as well. Amazing recommendations off the back of that, too. So many congratulations. And really looking forward to where this goes and the really much needed impact in this space as well that this will bring so yeah i think it's a fantastic endeavor and i wish you all the very best thank um you. with all future success thank you very much sally thanks for having me my absolute pleasure and thank you all for watching and listening too we'll be sharing some more details of what we've spoken about today so you can check out more details too and explore how to get involved thank you so much for joining thanks everyone